Greetings everyone, welcome to the channel, it's Ace Go, and today uh, I find myself in Birmingham because even though the nights are getting longer and colder, um, there's still a whole It can always be worse. It so could be worse. Birmingham. Yes, we're in Birmingham today. Um, so even though the biking season is coming to an end, it's still an exciting time because today is Motorcycle Live. So we're here at the NEC with my friend Mike. Say hello, Mike. Yes. And we're going to sit on lots of lovely bikes and see what all the fuss is about. So um, we're holding hands as well. Here we go! We could... It's Kawasaki there. So we are here, straight here. Alright, yeah. <laughs> so the first stop at this show was the Royal Enfield stand. Uh, my friend Mike has a bit of a soft spot for the Royal Enfields. Uh, his grandfather actually used to ride uh, the original version of the Bullet, the 350cc version of the Bullet during the Second World War. Uh, he was a dispatch rider for the RAF. Uh, I know in recent years they've had a few matte, uh, matte camouflage painted versions of these bikes and uh, they really are nice to see, real classically designed, simply put together. Um, but it's always nice to go and see the Royal Enfields. Next stand on the list was the KTM stand. We walked over to the KTM stand. You might have seen in my recent video my top seven bikes to see. Um, I did uh, drop the 890 Duke R in there. And so yes, I was quite intrigued to go and see this bike. And yeah, it does look absolutely razor sharp. I really like the look of the KTM. It really does have a, a very unique, angular, sharp look about it. So they really did pick the right name, you know, the scalpel for this bike. Uh, and this 890 is apparently even sharper with lots of WP uh, accessories on there. It's got Brembo's. Um, it's obviously got the more, more CC's in there as well. And obviously this is a show bike and there's going to be lots of people climbing on board this thing and, and sitting on it. It did look very worn. I must admit the plastics all around the seating area and it had scuffs on it. At first I thought it maybe it was just, you know, because it's a show bike, but compared to other bikes that we sat on, which didn't have any kind of signs of wear really, um, the KTM just seemed to be very worn and scratched. I don't know if you noticed that at all. So um, yeah, 890 Duke car, lovely looking bike, real sharp. It'd be great to ride. I have no doubt whatsoever, but um, might be a bit paranoid about getting scratches and signs of wear on it so soon, but anyway, that's just me. Next door to that was the Husqvarna stand, the Swedish brand's uh, Husqvarna motorcycles. Now I know that Husqvarna make a lot of things in the world, uh, one of them being motorbikes, and they've actually made them since 1903. So they became part of the KTM group in 2013, so you know, this is a brand that's, you know, got a whole load of, you know, quality support around it now. And, um, yeah, it was quite interesting. They had some very nice, stunning and trick-looking bikes. Uh, this one I'm focusing on, the Vip Pillin 701 uh, for 2020, was a really nice find. Kitted out with WP accessories, uh, yeah, Brembo's motorsport wheels, uh, LED lights, an Akrapovic system on the back. A single-cylinder 693cc, uh, punching out 75 brake horsepower. Um, it had an up and down quick shifter included. In terms of price, it's coming in just shy of £9,000, which really puts this bike in amongst those, like, you know, the MT-09 SPs and the Triumph Street Triple R um, and the new BMW F900R. But yeah, I don't know really. Have you got a Husqvarna? Do you own a Vip Pillin? Have you test rode one? Um, it might be one to try next year, actually. So, but yeah, really lovely looking bike. Perhaps, perhaps if Husqvarna made a more standardized version of it, you know, put less trick components on it and brought the price down that might encourage people to kind of get involved. Really nice looking bike though. Next up after that was the Herald Motorcycle Stand. You know, quick look at the Herald Motorbikes and this one I'm focusing on the Brute 500. A funky looking roadster costing a mere £6,500, giving you a, a punchy 449cc single cylinder engine. Uh, 42 brake horsepower, so this kind of falls into the A2 category. 
Uh, it's got an LED headlamp, really attractive multi-spoke wheels, upside down forks. What I did like about the website, when you go on the Herald website, um, they do really encourage you to make it your own and they've got dedicated workshops to you know, really bring your ideas to life. Yeah, A2 friendly roadster with some curb appeal, the Brute 500. Um, one to take for a test ride if you're looking at, if you're looking at your A2 license. Next stand on the list was the BMW stand, and firstly time to be dwarfed by the huge R1250 Adventure. What a bike, you know, so much bike. Uh, kitted out with tech and fail safes to navigate any post-apocalyptic terrain. You know, the whole adventure range, they're instantly recognizable. They remind me of the old uh, Long Way Round TV series. Uh, they make me wanna, you know, put a map on the table and, and plot a route along it, you know, that kind of thing. It's uh, you're very inspiring bikes and just kitted out with so much kit. I really do like the um, little SOS. Mike showed me the little SOS button you can press. Um, I don't know what happens when you press that. You know, do they come in with choppers and, and, and then airlift you out of there? I don't know. But I've never test ridden one, never rode one. Maybe that's one for the bucket list. What came next though was a bit unexpected. I didn't really expect to look around the BMW stand so much. Um, we had to look at the roadsters and then um, came across the brand new, the two brand new models, the F900XR um, and the F900R. Now we had a look at the XR first and it looked really nice, the, the, the TFT dash looked really cool and it offers a really nice upright riding position. I have no doubt that this could eat miles, but it was the R version that really kind of stopped me in my tracks. I didn't really expect to um, to, to, you know, to be wowed by such a bike, but yeah, sat on it, I thought, wow, okay, this is nice. And it kind of reminds me of the old MT-09, you know, with the with the older headlamp. And as much as I like the LEDs on the new MT-09, the, kind of the, the, the dual, you know, number Johnny 5 short circuit style kind of lights going on, um, I think I prefer the old MT-09, and this, this kind of looks a bit like the old MT-09 but it has that BMW quality of finish. And when you set up it, you've got this TFT dash, which has all of these, um, you know, all, all these readings and instrumentation, and um, you've got a really intuitive, on, on your left hand, you've got that cog that you can just roll through the menu system really nicely without thinking about it. Um, the finish is really amazing. The LED headlamps all round. It's got a quick shifter up and down. And for me, this is one of the surprise bikes of the show. In terms of the price, that was what really blew me away the most, is the price. I forgot to mention the price. £8,500. So you've got a BMW two-cylinder, 105 brake horsepower, 211 kilos, and it's only eight and a half grand. So that's like the same price as an MT-09. If you put both of those bikes side by side, the quality of finish on the BM is so much better than the Yamaha, you know, uh, and if you put all the trick components on the sporty editions, the, the quick shifter and all that, it comes to about nine and a half grand just under that. So BMW have really they've, they've put in a kind of curveball into that whole naked middleweight category now, and uh, I'm, I'm quite eager to go and try one of these and give it a test ride. So um, yeah, one of the bikes of the show for me, without a doubt, the BMW F900R. So on the train in, Eddie was going on about all the different bikes we could be seeing today. So we have like BMW behind us, which we've just done. And uh, one of the biggest ones he was going on about was Artisan Electric. Artisan Electric. Here they are. Ooh. 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 Um. Next up on the list is the Triumph stand, so we immediately flocked to the Triumph stand. Uh, quite a number of bikes, both Mike and I were interested in here. Um, he was quite keen to see the Triumph Street Twin. Um, he was really impressed with the um, the Thruxtons. So yeah, we looked around those bikes there, the Heritage range, and then moved across to the bike that I'm really keen to see, which was the, the brand new Triumph Street Triple RS, the 2020 version. Um, obviously I did a, a, a ride, a test ride review of the uh, 2019 version, the outgoing 2019 
uh, Street Triple RS. Um, so it was really great to sit on this new version and see it in the flesh with the new, the new headlights and the uh, the revised bodywork. And this is a, a bike that's right up on the top of my list at the moment. And for me, I think it, you know it really did kind of cement where it's sitting. It, the quality of finish looked great. It looks lightweight. It just looked like a small bike. I must admit, a really nimble, small, agile, and aggressive-looking bike. A huge amount of value for the money. Uh, you really do get what you pay for, it seems. So, um, uh, looking forward to test riding this one, and who knows? Next stand on the list was the Honda stand and the Honda Fireblade, the 2020 uh, brand new Fireblade uh, that was recently revealed um, at the EICMA show in Italy. And yeah, the new Fireblade, I mean, sitting on it, it is an absolutely extreme bike to sit on. I remember seeing the video of Marc Marquez riding this thing around Barcelona and it just makes it look so easy and then you sit on this thing and it just, you know, it is a bike designed to do one thing and that's designed to go as fast and, you know, and as ruthlessly and aggressively fast as possible. I really like some of the um, the dash, the dashboard elements. There was a, a G-force meter on the dashboard actually showing you how many Gs you're going to be pulling as you're going around corners. It was. <laughs> You know the technology in this thing is uh, um, is you know at the, at the top end of Honda technology development. It's um, a really special bike. I quite like the matte version. There was a matte black version just around the um, the other side of the stand, and it was kind of p positioned in a kind of a wheelie kind of stand. And that matte black version was very nice. I did like that, um, and it got you you know it allowed you to kind of get up close to all the aerodynamic winglet tech that they've got on there as well, and see the bike up close. But yeah, the 2020 Fireblade drawing a lot of attention. Um, it's certainly too much bike for me. But um, yeah, it was a very special bike to go and see. Lots of attention there. After that, I nipped over to see the um, Honda CBR650R, the middleweight uh, four-cylinder sports bike that I rode um, a few months ago. The uh, you know essentially the, the throwback CBR600R. You know brought forward into uh, 2020 really lovely um, nimble you know 93 brake horsepower four cylinder really quite a sporty ride I thought it would be much more upright when I sat on it but this was a very uh, sporty position uh, quite exhilarating and a really good price as well I think it's just shy of eight thousand um, pounds for Honda build quality and performance uh, really exciting bike to ride so worth a, a test ride if you're looking for a do-everything sports bike quality on it yeah okay. it's real like this will be by of the century you reckon the it will be the yeah was. the last one was wasn't it yeah i must say the suspension's quite hard yeah 399 pounds i love the finish on it it's just the, the finish i really like that red seat but look at the wheels i know i know yeah. You can't, you know, oh, it's got, it's, it's, it's got a front and. What the hell is going on? I'm not sure. Is that, that's the gear change, that's surely. The gear change. So, somehow they're doing. Must be uh, a slip clutch or something. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's got an auto blipper. <laughs> I'll tell you what's really nice. I've just sat on the CB650 and that one fits really nice. The CB650 is. Oh, the CB650R, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, this is the uh, sibling to the CBR I just sat on. And it is slightly cheaper as well. Yeah. Yeah, more rough, right? Nice. I just find like you can put your foot down nice on it when you when you curl, yeah. when you when you're curled up. Nothing's interfering. You're not interfering with the engine or the gearbox. Yeah, yeah, your, foot, yeah. your foot hits the ground okay. It's just a good overall feel on that bike. Next stand up on the list was the Yamaha stand and uh, obviously a brand close to home for me with the uh, I've owned a, a Yamaha Tracer 700 for the last few years thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, yeah it was really nice to see the new updated Tracer 700 very futuristic new aggressive looking design there they really made it look uh, mean and rugged so um, yeah big big thumbs up there for the uh, the new Yamaha Tracer for 2020.
Yeah, and obviously went over to look at the Yamaha MT-09. Obviously, that's got a got a bit of a soft spot for the Yamaha MT-09. Um, I don't know really. I'm surprised that they've not really updated the bike at all. I was kind of hoping for some maybe some you know aesthetic update maybe or a new color scheme. It's all the same old, same old really at the moment um, for the MT-09. And comparing that, you know, the quality of finish compared to that to the new BMW F900R. I don't know, I kind of left uh, the MT-09 is kind of feeling a bit, uh, you know. Moving over to the XSR 900, um, again, the bike itself is, is exactly as it was. There's no real updates to that bike at all. However, there is a new paint scheme. And uh, for me, one of the paint schemes of the show was the, uh, the 2020 XSR 900. As you can see with the red and the gold wheels, it looks a bit uh, Honda-esque, you know, a bit of a, I think Mike said it looked a bit like a Honda Hornet. And um, I kind of, yeah, it really does nice. The, the, the colour scheme is really popping on that. So it's £9,000 for the XSR 900. I know you get the absolutely phenomenal engine, uh, that, that triple engine, uh, which is in the MT-09 and in the Tracer 900. But um, yeah, compared to the equipment and the features you're getting on a lot of other bikes now, I just feel that's quite a bit much to ask for you know just a, a, a fantastic engine um, so yeah big thumbs up for the uh, for the for the color scheme on the XSR 900 for 2020 it looks really really nice um, a bit of a shame that you know the MT 09s haven't had any kind of upgrade or update um, considering all the other bikes seem to be really you know pushing updates now and adding more value for riders uh, it's a shame that the MT09 is kind of sitting where it is at the moment so we'll see how that goes over the next uh, over the next year Quick mention goes out to the Harley Davidson Street 750. Um, Harley's not really my thing, but if you are looking to get into that uh, into that world, then 6,100 odd pounds will will get you a brand new Harley Davidson, which I think is a you know, pretty pretty much of a bargain really for such an awesome you know iconic brand. Um, as you can see, Mike was pretty comfortable on that bike. He was uh, pretty happy with that, but I was blown away by the price. So um, yeah, really really good deal there. 125 pound deposit, 125 a month, and you can have yourself a brand new Harley. Um, yeah, really worth uh, really worth checking out. From there, we went over to the Ducati stand. Now, whether you like them or not, I think Ducati have a special place in most motorcyclist hearts. I think they produce beautiful bikes, insane bikes, and absolutely sublime motorcycles. Uh, and this year was no exception. Um, I visited the scrambler stand first of all the dedicated scrambler stand and i loved how many iterations of the scrambler you can get now there's so many options uh, obviously the, the standard scrambler i think it's a 700 isn't it and also the 1100 now um for, for that bigger engine feel uh, really really cool looking bikes and then wandering over to the, the main ducati stand itself you know the penigali v2 was the first bike we found and you know it was very uh, very focused to sit on you know beautiful little bike um, that's getting rave reviews right now as you know the best out and out sports bike you can buy I think the retail price I think it's around, around 15,000 pounds I think for a you know the, the base model Panigale but um, yeah lovely bike and I went over saw the Street Fighter V4 which I did a video on recently um, the Street Fighter V4 just that that for me was you know the Ducati of the show it just looked absolutely incredible the fins and the aerodynamics and the engine and the the led and the technology just it just looks like an absolutely insane awesome bike and um yeah i mean is this a bike that you're looking for for next year is the street fighter on your on your radar for 2020 let me know in the comments below Next up, we ventured over to the Ducati Super Sport, and Mike actually had his first sit on a Super Sport. You know, the relaxed kind of everyday sports bike, and I think it's a really nice bike. Eleven thousand odd pounds gets you a, a really nicely finished bike with um, Brembos and Olins and all manner of uh, top spec gear. And um, yeah, I mean, if you're not looking for that kind of wrist crushingly painful, you know, Panigale hunched over sports bike experience, then Ducati have the Super Sport, which I think is a you know a great great um, addition to the range but yeah Mike seemed really impressed with this one a quick shout out to the zero motorcycles the you know completely zero emissions fully electric motorcycles from zero um, I stopped and immediately looked at this this kind of track converted bike here then turned around and saw the road bike version of it and it really looks like a nice bike this is a, a really well finished bike it's got that kind of a Honda-esque kind of paint scheme going on and uh, you know obviously the price is 15,000 pounds I think it's um, 
retailing for however you know it's you know completely electric and you know over the next few years you know these prices are only going to be coming down as, as the technology improves as the competition increases so yeah really cool I, I don't know if anybody here is anybody watching got a zero motorcycle are you are you thinking of buying one uh, you know please drop a comment below let us know um, but yeah really exciting to see these bikes really coming on leaps and bounds in terms of not only the you know the, the range that they're providing and the you know the kind of the power output but also you know the looks department they look really cool and futuristic Next up, the Kawasaki stand. We wander over to the Kawasaki stand, checking out the new Z900 and obviously the new ZH2. You can kind of see it here, kind of turning, pivoting slowly on its turntable, you know, slowly cooking. And uh, it just looks absolutely awesome and mean, doesn't it? It just really looks aggressively, you know, focused, you know, designed to destroy all. It just looks really cool. I love the, uh, the red framework on it and the, you know, the red and the black really pops. So. This is a great bike from Kawasaki, great looking bike from Kawasaki. Um, after that, Mike made a beeline for the uh, Z900 Cafe, I test rode that earlier in the year and you know he's really keen on this bike, I think it's very much on his list as a, a future motorcycle for him, um, but yeah, fantastic bike, um, new colour schemes out for this year as well, but um, so easy to ride at the same time an engine that's just howling and, and begging you to just to, to push it even further, push it even harder, whilst at the same time being quite relaxed and quite comfortable so um, yeah great uh, great find there Mike was really happy about that one Next up, we wandered over to the Suzuki stand. And yeah, not so much really grips me on the Suzuki stand. I mean, uh, I really like the Katana. I remember when they brought that out, I was really impressed with the uh, retro 80s look that they gave that bike. Um, it instantly reminded me of the, um, the 1980s hit show, Street Hawk. You know, if you've not ever watched an episode of Street Hawk, then do go on YouTube, find a, an episode. The guy, the cop, the off-duty cop, he uh, travels on this futuristic motorcycle at like three million miles an hour. You know, it sounds like a it's a two-stroke bike but it sounds like a four-stroke I think they dubbed it in the show um, but you know the katana it kind of it reminds me a little bit of that bike especially the black version um, but yeah in at the show we I noticed that the price of the katana they actually dropped it by about a thousand pounds um, I don't know whether that's you know because the bike is selling as much maybe I don't know but if you're in the in, in the market for a you know a muscle retro looking bike maybe it's worth getting down to Suzuki and seeing uh, what kind of deal you can get on one so that concludes my video of the uh, Motorcycle Live Show 2019, a really exciting show for me anyway, confirming uh, my admiration for the uh, Triumph Street Triple RS, the new 2020 update, and obviously discovering the new BMW F900R, these two bikes now which have become my desktop wallpapers at work, um, kind of having a face-off, it kind of looks quite cool, so um, yeah, always nice to uh, go to the show and actually find, you know, have a surprise find, which is really good, you know, did you go to the show? what did you what was the standout bike for you what was the best in show for you i do hope you've enjoyed the video please give a thumbs up to support the channel and uh, you know subscribe to see future motorcycle content this has been eddie set go ride safe drive safe i'll see you next time mm -hmm.